Hey guys, um, here we are. Camp looks different this year. Um, they gave me just a minute to do this thing, so I got a whip and spur. So I'm going to give you the the title, and then I'll, and then I'll pray. So tonight's title, you know, the theme of camp this year was freedom, and um, tonight's title is what others think. We want to. I want to free you up from what other people think, because I know in my life here at at, at the age that I am, is what others think still wads me up still. And, and so I, I want, and I do know what it was like when I was a teenager that it was even worse than it is now. So I, I want to free y'all up in that um, the best I can. I want to give you an, an idea of how to walk freely out of the opinions of others and what others think. So um, with that being said, I'm going to pray and then we'll get started. Lord Jesus, I, I love you and I thank you. I ask right now that you would just show up and show out. God, I ask that you would speak through me. And that not one word that is spoken is mine, but every word is yours, Lord. Lord Jesus, I'm going to say something that don't need to be said. Shut my mouth, but please let me speak your truths. Lord Jesus, in these things in your name I pray. Amen. All right, so when we are worried about what others think, we are not free. So, so, so here are some symptoms that show up if we are afraid of what others think. Y'all ready for these? You, are, you go along with what, what others want and regret it later. I'm going to read that one more time. You go along with others, with what others want and regret it later. Any of us ever done that right? Yes. Like we, we've went along with what our friend said and, and, look, and get later or in the middle of it and go, man, I wish I wouldn't have done that. The next symptom that comes up is you change what you think based on who's in the room. Guilty of that one too, right? We, we, we had this opinion with this group of friends, and then when we get with this group of friends, all of a sudden we, we change what we think because of we want to fit in, right? Next symptom is you avoid social settings or you never want to miss out. You, you, you either, either you don't want to be around anybody or you want to always be in the middle of everything. I've been guilty of that one as well. You read into what other people say or do, like they say this and you add to it, you think more than what they just said, you read into it, well that must mean they hate me, or that must mean whatever, right? Next symptom, you have a hard time asking for help. That's a symptom, that's a symptom of that you care what others think about you, is when you have a hard time reaching out and asking for help. The next symptom, you have a difficult time saying no. When somebody asks you to do something, even though you're covered up, you got too much going on, and mom and dad's told you you need to do this and that, and everything's going on, you still don't say no because you don't want them to not think good about you. Next symptom, you are, you are critical and judgmental to others. I know that sounds maybe funny, but when you're wanting and you're worried about what everybody else thinks about you, you are real critical of everybody around you because you, that's how you build yourself up. And the last symptom, and there's many more, but this last symptom I got stated here is you stretch, you stretch the truth to impress. Man, I know that that's a big one. It was a big one for me when I was a teenager. I, I, you know, I didn't necessarily lie but I added a little to it, you know. That horse was bucking. He wasn't bucking this high off. The, you know, he was bucking about this high off the ground. But I tell you, this sucker was bucking, you know, when I tell the story. I wasn't telling you that he was just kind of farting around there, right? I mean, we're, we're guilty of adding to the story. And that is a symptom of worrying about what others think. And, and, and there's many, many more. But I, I say these because I want us to understand that most all of us struggle with this thing. Most all of us that, that listen to this video, most all of us that really take some time and think about what other, you know, what our struggles is and some things that we're not freed up on. When we look at the fact that we worry about what others think, we, we deal with many of these symptoms. But Jesus wants us to set us free from this, right? Jesus doesn't want us to be bound up and worried about what everybody else thinks. He wants to set us free. He wants us to be free and free indeed, right? Jesus gave us a new identity, a fresh start. Your identity in Christ is huge. And I want to just talk to you for a minute about that. But your identity in Christ is big. Galatians 2.20 says this. It says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 
The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who lived, who loved me and gave himself for me. Do you know how special you are in God's eyes? If you don't, that, that's why you still try to fit in with the world. That's why you still try to fit in with everybody. That's still why you're worried about what everybody else thinks. Is because you truly don't know how much God loves you. Here's what God thinks about you. Once you have a new identity, once you're in Christ, and once, you, once you've stepped into that new thing, once you're a believer, once you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, once you say, yes, the truth is, is all of this is, is, is what Christ believes in you already, but it's not a part of your identity until you accept that identity. But when you accept that identity, here's what God says about you. You are His own special possession. You are chosen, handpicked by God who created the universe. You are. You're, you're, you're treasured. You are in, irreplaceable. There's no one else like you. I, I've said this a lot of times, but Dr. Seuss said it great as anybody. He says there's no one more youer than you. You are the only one created to do what God called, called you to do. You are irreplaceable. There's no one else that can do what you do. You are, you are loved beyond compassion. We, we, we are loved beyond our, our comprehension. We, we can't even begin to understand how much God loves us. You are worth dying for. John 3.16 you, you, are, you are forgiven. You are His children. You are His sacred... I messed that up. You are secure for all eternity. I'll say that one again. You are secure for all eternity. You are set free, you are precious to Him, and you are set apart. Listen to me, guys. We are special, not because we've done anything or because we can do something. No, we are special because we are children of God. We are sons and daughters of God, and that's what makes us special. That's what makes us treasured. That's what makes us loved. That's what makes us forgiven. That's what makes us children. That's what makes us free. It's the fact that we are children of God. We were chosen, picked by God, and if we just accept His grace and His love and His mercy, then we can be completely set free from what others think because we're grounded in the identity that I'm a child of God. Just think about that for a minute. This is you. If you're in Christ, this is who you are. This is your permanent identity. It can never be removed, messed up, forsaken, taken away, or changed. This is your identity in Christ. If, 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 if you're saved, if you've asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, your identity is all of those things I just read. You're, you're chosen, special possession. You're created and chosen, handpicked by the creator of the universe. God's child. You, that is who you are. I don't care what everybody else has said. I don't care what mama said. I don't care what the teacher said. I don't care what even you say in the mirror. What God says about you is your identity. And he says that you are my son. You are my daughter who I love, who I cherish, who is irreplaceable, who is precious. What would it be like to walk around in that identity? See, I believe with all my heart when we choose to walk around and, and look at that identity and not all the labels that we give ourselves or, or others give us or, or, or like I said, mama's teachers, anybody else give us. Listen, not those labels, but when we make, what would it be like to make a decision to walk around in the labels that God gave us? Ephesians 2.10, that you're a masterpiece created to do the good works God set before you. What if that was the label that we walked around in? What if that was the identity, the name tag that I wrote on my chest was not that it was not Chase Pope, but it was the Son of God? What would that be like? 
Because I'm here to tell you that if we can walk in that identity, there will be freedom from what others think of you. Something else that Jesus came to give us and set us free was a fresh start. And at that fresh start, we can begin to be free and walk out into that freedom that, that's beyond understanding, that freedom that is only through Christ Jesus. It says in 2 Corinthians, this is last year's camp verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 said this, Therefore, if anyone in, is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Might have been two years ago now that I think about it. It says the old has gone. It doesn't say it's just hidden or covered up. No, no, it is gone. The new is here. Did y'all hear that? That's, we get a new start. The old is gone. The new is here. We're, we're new. We're new. We're, we're no longer who we once was. We are now sons and daughters of God. So even, even listen, I know, I get it. When, when, when you're, especially in high school and teenage years, there's stuff that you've done, there's stuff that you've said, and people don't seem like they just cannot forget it, right? God's forgot it, and it's time to walk in that and quit worrying about what everybody else is saying. See, if we're worried about what everybody else is saying, we will never look at the fresh start as being the fresh start that God gave us. But if we'll look at the, at, at the things that God says about us and begin to operate in that identity, then the fresh start becomes being something cool. It comes to being something that it was always meant to be. And that's a fresh start that's brand new, that's free from all the past, all the old stuff, all that junk. It's free from that. And we can step out into that with boldness. See, God did this for a reason. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20 says this. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he was committed to, he was committed to us the message of reconciliation. Where are where are therefore Christ, we, excuse me, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconcil reconciled to God. See, God gave us a fresh start and he freed us because he wants us to speak, he wants to speak through us. See, God's created you to be an ambassador. He, and, and then it's a big word, and y'all are smarter than me, most of you, but listen, an ambassador is just a commercial, if you will. He wants us to be his, his representation. He, he wants us to be the thing that, that speaks for him. We, we get to be his messenger of reconciliation. We get to be the ones who, who tell the world about what God's done in our lives. Let me tell you real quick that if you're worried about what everybody else is thinking, first of all, you're not going to make the move to begin to follow Jesus so all those identity things will be true about you. And second of all, maybe you've made that step and you've stepped into being a Christian. You, you went to the war room at camp. You, you, you spoke to, a, to one of your counselors. You spoke to a wrangler and you got free from your sin. And you, and, and, and you've, but you've never really accepted that identity that Christ has given you. And you've always worried about what everybody else is thinking. Listen to me. What everybody else thinks does not matter because God created you to be a masterpiece. God created you to do a work that no one else around you can do. Your freedom that Jesus came and died to give you, the Son came to set you free from, is freedom from what everybody else thinks. Because now I stand in the assurance that if Christ loved me so much, if God loved me so much that He sent His Son to die for me, what is there else? Guys, it's been a crazy year this year, but I'm excited to get to talk to you. And I hope and I hope and I pray that you're walking in freedom this summer. 
I hope that you're walking in the freedom of Christ and I hope that you're not worried about what everybody else is thinking or what everybody else is saying. I hope that you're in a spot that you're freed up enough that you can truly walk out the life that God called you and be the messenger of Christ. For y'all that may not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today's the day. Today's the day because He set us free from the shame and the guilt and the pain of all those sins and all those things. Don't wait any longer. Walk in the freedom, the freedom that Christ came to give to us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I love you and I thank you. I thank you for whoever is watching. God, I, I thank you that you have set us free from the opinions of others. That no longer does what others think bother me because if God's for me, then who could be against me? God, I pray for the one that may be listening and doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior. I, I ask them to just say this prayer with me and do it right where they're at. They just say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I can't do this on my own. I need you to be my Lord, my Savior, and my boss. Jesus, lead me from this point on. And these things in your mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you all. Adios.